Welcome to Vital Talk from U.S. Foods. I'm your host, Joshua Haynes. Vital Talk delivers solution oriented discussions with healthcare food service experts to help you better navigate the ever changing landscape of the industry. We hope you enjoy. Today on Vital Talk, we're discussing resident satisfaction and its impact to the bottom line. Joining us today, we have Hilton Van Tonder, Vice President of Dining Services for Aviva Senior Living. Hilton is a self-described foodie and previously worked in country clubs and resort settings before transitioning to senior living. Welcome to the show, Hilton. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Hilton, you've been the VP of Dining for the past five years. Aviva Senior Living's corporate offices are in Miami, but you've recently moved near U.S. Foods corporate offices in the Windy City of Chicago. Lloyd Jones, LLC, owner of Aviva, has facilities throughout Indiana, Nebraska, Tennessee, Texas, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Ohio. With your commercial background, Hilton, you started the whole dining program from scratch with an atmosphere similar to fine dining events with restaurant style menus and dining experiences. You know, I'm curious on your thoughts on how dining plays a role in resident satisfaction and what does the dining program look like at Aviva Senior Living? No, thanks a lot, Josh. Yeah, so the dining program is very, very important. You know, we, um, we're the only department that gets uh, judged uh, at least three times a day, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, um, so we have to make sure that uh, not only do we, do we get uh, great products, um, you know, especially from, uh, from U.S. Foods um, and all the vendors that, that U.S. Foods work with, but um, at Aviva Senior Living, we've, we've, got, we've got high standards. You know, I was fortunate enough to, to work for um, some very big uh, senior living um, companies and, uh, and like, like you mentioned, country clubs, resorts. So um, I'm used to seeing what those high standards are. So I try to bring that into Aviva Senior Living Dining so that our residents, um, you know, most of them can't, can't travel, travel across, uh, across the world anymore like they used to. So we want to bring those cuisines over to them. So we want to make sure that, that they have the best breakfast, um, a fantastic lunch, and an even better dinner every single day. And not just breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner every single day, but adding chef demos, um, you know, maybe we've got a new recipe that uh, we haven't tried yet. So we, so we have a chef demo for, for our memory care assisted living independent um, residents, and they can try the, the recipe before it uh, goes on the menu. We have like special holidays, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, uh, Hanukkah, th- uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas. But in between that, we have special themed events as well. So we try and make it as interesting as as possible, um, dining should never be boring. Um, so we, we try and we try and give the residents and their family members and any guests that walk through the doors a great uh, a great experience. You certainly made dining an event there at Aviva and provide a collaborative environment for residents. I'm sure our listeners know just how much food is a marketing component and helps with sales. How has dining impacted the bottom line there at Aviva? Yes, yeah, so I remember a few years ago, uh, I was at a, a, a sales conference um, with one of my previous companies, and uh, I had to do a presentation for the, for the sales, sales and marketing teams. And uh, one of the first questions I asked was, um, you know, at a scale of one to 10, how important do you think dining is to your prospects? And, you know, within a split second, they said 10 immediately. So um, it's very, very important that not only do we provide a great product, but um, that our dining uh, services directors and chefs um, and anybody from the culinary team, even service cooks, that, um, that, that they know how to interact with, uh, you know, with guests that are coming through the door because this is going to be their home in the future. So we want to make them feel comfortable because you know, some, of the, some of the future residents, they might have been living in their houses for you know, 40, 50, 60 years. Um, maybe they lost a spouse, um, and so it, it's very, very nerve-wracking. You know, any any move is stressful, but moving into a, a different kind of environment um, is stressful as well. So anything that we can do from from a community side and a dining side at Aviva Senior Living to make um, our future residents comfortable um, when they come do the tour, so that they look forward to. Um, you know, coming to eat every day, meeting new friends. And the, the, the good thing, <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but the good thing is, is that a lot of our residents like to sit in the same seats every single day. So you know that, you know, John Smith and, 
and Mary Beth are going to be sitting at table five, you know, at seat one and two almost every single day. Some residents move around. But it's nice that you could, um, when a prospect comes in and you learn um, their personality, that you can pair them with some of the residents that we have already so that they can start building those relationships, you know? You know, just like going to our favorite diner and having our special spot, that really makes Aviva a more appealing place to stay. And as you said, call home. Yes. How do you measure resident satisfaction and show you are moving the needle? So that comes from um, touching tables every single day. You know, we have uh, food committees, um, our independent living we have, and assisted living we have uh, two options. We give the communities options. We have uh, little committees of about five or six, you know, with the dining services director, the chef, the dining room manager, and they meet once a month to get some feedback. Um, we usually have a, a resident that that, um, that has the responsibility of taking notes and, and chairman and organizing those meetings. And then um, and they discuss the whole dining program. We can let, let them know uh, upcoming events, any changes in the dining uh, systems uh, that, that might be happening. Um, and also we have the option of, um, council, like food, we call it like food forum, where, um, usually you have a, a council meeting or a town hall meeting where they talk about every single department and uh, the maintenance director goes up, the housekeeping director, the executive director, um, and we have a food forum just for dining services. So the residents can meet, uh, also once a month, you know, we put some snacks out there, some beverages. And then we, we just talk about dining in general, and it's open to anybody, you know, residents from memory care, family members, everybody can come over um, and have that discussion. And they, and they really, really do look forward to it. Um, and, but I think the, the, biggest, the biggest thing is, having, is making sure that we, and I do this when I go visit all the communities too, is that we talk into the residents, you know, go introduce yourself, uh, how's everything going? Um, you know, talk about dining and, you know, residents really aren't shy to tell you what's going on, at least the majority. <laughs> so, you, you know, off the bat exactly, you know, what you need to focus on. And, and um, I love it because I get those residents involved as well in, in decision making. I love to involve residents, you know, when it comes to, because that's their home, you know. So anything we can do to, to get them involved, whether it's menu planning or helping out with new systems or, you know, discussing issues and, and coming up with solutions. I think that's that's what makes us at Aviva Senior Living different. Hilton, I love that you're getting them so involved. I and mean, as we were preparing for our discussion today, you had mentioned some technology that you were looking to invest in, like POS, and you were using some QR codes as well. Yes, yeah, so actually um, we are using a, a QR code now for, um, for surveys that, Instead of having uh, common cards on the table, we have a um, on the on the bottom on our tables. We've got like a little card uh, where we have our, our special of the day, and it's a QR code. And if you scan that, it actually takes you to that community. Um, and any family member that walks in um, or resident, if they want to, if they have a smartphone, um, you know, they can actually make a comment. And we've got like ten about ten questions. Um, on there about how was your experience, you know, uh, how long did you wait for your food, all that kind of stuff. So instead of having that, that card, you know, that sits on the table and, uh, you know, it gets used, it gets used um, not so often, you know, to save, save a little bit of paper and to, to um, work with the technology that we have at our fingertips nowadays. Um, it, it's actually working out pretty well. We've introduced it at a couple of communities um, just to see how it goes, just in case we need to make some tweaks. But um, the QR codes are, are, are really, really good. Even um, throughout our building, we've got, um, we partner with, with a POS company and uh, we've got digital signage in our buildings. Um, so the menus on rotation, any special events that we have, they've got the photographs of that special event. Um, yeah, and, and obviously social media is, is very, very big. So um, we have, you know, even if it's a, a daily special um, Osobuco or whatever we serve for that day, our dining uh, teams, uh, dining directors and chefs are sending us photographs and we're sharing it on social media. So, um, yeah, we, we're definitely embracing the technology and, uh, and always looking for um, ways to make our staff, um, you know, work easier um, or more pleasant and the same for the residents. 
Well, I'm sure the POS system is going to be a game changer for your data, but it's very interesting and fascinating that residents are picking up on the concept of QR codes. Yes. I'm wondering, are there any other considerations to measure resident satisfaction throughout Aviva Senior Living differently? Yeah, so I, I think the the thing is, uh, the key word is consistency, you know, consistency in our service, in our food, um, because if you're consistent, you know, you're always going to have a good a good dining program. You know, everybody looks for ways to um, to keep that consistency or to get to that level of consistency. Um, but I think the best thing to do is uh, like face to face with the residents, you know, getting their comments, you know, walk in the hallways, um, stopping and taking the time um, because listening, listening is key and you actually listen um, to what, what they are asking of us. It makes it a lot easier. I remember um, a lot of our chefs, they, they couldn't understand uh, when they first joined senior living, you know, they're coming from, you know, country clubs and restaurants and resorts. They couldn't, un they couldn't get a grip of, of like, why don't they like what I'm putting on the menu? You know, I've, I've come from a five-star restaurant, you know, you know they, they don't like the, the, the filet or whatever the case. And it's because they had to learn what the residents can and, and you know, what, what they enjoy, you know. And we found that, yes, we do have um, special events where we have seafood night and steak night and all that kind of thing. But re residents, you know, some residents, they can't chew as well as we can, you know, um, and maybe some need a soft diet. So. Um, I learned very, very quickly that it's it's not what um, we want to put on the menu for the residents, it's what the residents want us to put on the menu for them. So um, good home cooking, you know, like Sunday brunches, everything they've experienced um, growing up and cooking for their families. And once uh, once we figured that out, um, it was a lot uh, a lot more consistent we, we, and a lot more positive. And Hilton, to support your listening, you also mentioned about the use of kiosks with iPads on them. Yes, so we have uh, a few of our bistros um, now. Uh, we, we've got a big project going on where every one of our communities is getting, there's a project to improve the Wi-Fi, uh, multiple pickup points across the, across the whole community and, and all of the floors that we have to have a strong Wi-Fi because, uh, you know, POS needs a strong Wi-Fi to be able to function correctly. And so at a lot of our bistros, we, we have a, a little kiosk where, Residents have the option to either order through um, the server behind behind the line, or uh, we're going to have these. Um, you see them a lot at airports too. But uh, a little kiosk, little tablet there where they can come in, um, they can put their name in, um, and they can put their order in, and it automatically goes, you know, uh, to the to the bistro uh, attendant, and they can put the sandwich or the wrap or get a pizza slice or a beef slider or something together grab and go concept, you know, speeding up service. So it's another just another way that we we enjoy using the the technology, you know. That is truly state of the art in helping residents have satisfaction where they're at for their dining services. We want to thank our guest, Hilton Van Tonder, Vice President of Dining Services at Aviva Senior Living, for joining us here on Vital Talk to help us discuss resident satisfaction and its impact to the bottom line. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you. This has been Vital Talk from U.S. Foods. For more information, resources, and tools to help you better manage your healthcare food service operation, visit us at usfoods.com slash vitals. That's usfoods.com slash V-I-T-A-L-S. Join us again on our next podcast. I'm Joshua Haynes. Thanks for listening.